Hi, I'm Barbara Fox, and today I thought I'd go over the BGP best path selection algorithm. So the internet is a network of networks, and each of the individual networks is connected to other networks using BGP, the Border Gateway Protocol. And each network is really an administrative domain, and it consists of one or more ASs, autonomous systems. So within an autonomous system or an administrative domain, the routers run in IGP, an interior gateway protocol, and that's usually ISIS or OSPF. And the routers are routing peers on their IP interfaces. They send out routing information and they learn about their router peer. And using routing algorithms, they learn the state and topology of the entire network within this uh, IGP domain so that you can get from any node in the network to any other node in the network using routing. eBGP, external BGP, connects border routers in separate ASs together. That's the protocol that runs eBGP. And what a border router wants to do is advertise the routes internal to its autonomous system or its network out into the world so that its nodes can be reached. And the other thing that it wants to do is all the information that it learns about other routes in the world, it wants to tell its internal routers about so that they can reach that world beyond this network. And so what, they do, what the border router does is it advertises the routes into the network and makes itself the next hop. So it says, if you want to go to any of these router, routes that I've learned, come to me and I'll forward the traffic. So it sets next hop self on, it, on, on the border routers. Now, within a network, you have a number of exterior border routers, and they need to communicate with each other. And so the protocol they use to communicate is IBGP, so internal BGP. And there's a full mesh of connectivity between the border routers. Now, the border routers are not directly connected, so they are BGP neighbors. They're not peers. They're not discovered. The connect, they're configured the BGP neighbors are configured and the connections are created using TCP. And then border routers share the information that they have learned with their peers in the IGP. Routers are getting, BGP routers are getting a lot of information, a lot of routing information from a lot of different sources. And what they need to do is determine what's the best way to get to a particular route. What's the best path to get to a route, a particular route. And there's a decision tree that the routers use to decide what, which path is the best path of all the routes that they've learned, of all the paths that they've learned. And so we're, that's what we're going to talk about. So the, the first thing that a router looks at is the highest weight. And this is a Cisco proprietary attribute. It's only in Cisco routers. And the scope is the router itself. So say this router wanted to forward traffic and it's learning routes from this AS and from this AS. And for some business reason, AT&T wants to prefer routes that it's learned from Verizon over routes that it's learned from Lumen. What it will do is configure a higher weight on the routes that it learned from this AS701 router, Verizon router, than for any routes learned from the Lumen router. And then that way, if it learns the same route from both routers, it'll prefer, it'll send the traffic through the Verizon network. So this is only local to this router. It's not shared with any other routers in, this, in the administrative domain. It's a local perimeter. So say that we didn't set highest weight. The next attribute we look at is the highest local preference. And the scope of this is the IGP. So say, again, we wanted to prefer Verizon routes over Lumen routes. Any routes that the border router learned from Verizon, it would advertise to its peer routers with a higher value to prefer the Verizon routes over the Lumen routes. And that way, it's telling the other routers in the AS to send the traffic uh, forward it through Verizon instead of Lumen. Now, say we didn't have local preference set. The next thing we want to look at are locally originated prefixes. So these are prefixes really that come from either a network command, which is a BGP command to create a static route on the router. If we had something directly connected, we might use a network command to advertise that route. If we wanted to advertise a route of the router itself, we would use the network command to advertise that route. 
we look at aggregated routes, we look at redistributed routes, routes that were redistributed from the IGP. So if a border router learns routes from the ISIS, it would prefer that. And by preferring these local routes, usually that, what that means is that the route is within the AS. And so we wanna prefer that route before we use an external route. Now, this is also the place that AIGP is considered. When I, I said a network consists of one or more ASs, so like Lumen, the CenturyLink bought level three and became Lumen. And so Lumen has got multiple ASs. So here I'm showing two of them, AS3356 and AS209. Within this AS, the router is going to learn from the IGPs what the cost to get to a particular route within the AS is. It learns that when it, the information is redistributed from the IGP. Because both of these ASs are in the same administrative domain, you might want to share that information with the border router in the other AS that's in the same administrative domain and basically make it look like a combined network. So this router would advertise the internal route with the IGP value of a cost to get to that route from, from this router. You only do it between with ASs that are in the same administrative domain and you use the AIGP attribute to do it. All right, so now say that the, none of these broke the tie. The next thing we look for is the shortest AS path. So BGP isn't gonna know every hop through the network. A user in this AS3356 wanted to access a computer at Harvard. BGP isn't going to know the exact route through the entire network to get to that computer. It's going to know that it traverses this AS and this AS and this AS to get to that router. And so it's going to have an AS path going this way. So that this is one AS path to get to Harvard. Another AS path to get to Harvard might be go from this AS to this AS to this AS to Harvard. So this path is longer. So if uh, we were trying to choose either this path or this path, we would choose this path. It has the, the least, the fewest ASs that are traversed. So say that's not, that doesn't break the tie. The next thing that we look at is the origin, where the route came from. So the first thing would be I, IGP, which means we learned it from the, the network command. It's a static route that we learned from BGP. The next highest preference would be EGP, and EGP is the predecessor the, to BGP, and that's really not in the network anymore, so we're really not going to see that. The, other, the last part would be incomplete, and that would be any other routes that we learned. So it might be redistributed routes or, or other routes that we learned. So basically, we're going to prefer IGP routes over incomplete routes. The next thing is the lowest multi-edge discriminator from the same AS, MED. When we talked about local preference, we said, you know, this router advertised into its own AS, which next top it should, it should prefer. With MED, if you have multiple egress routers between two ASs, what you can do is tell the other AS to prefer a particular router by advertising it with the lowest MED. So if we wanted to prefer this router, we would advertise it with a MED of zero. And MED, uh, zero is actually the default MED. So what happens is if you want to prefer this router and make these routers le less preferable, you change their MED values to be higher based on your preference of which routers should be traversed. And in that way, this AS is influencing this AS on how it's sending the traffic. So it's sort of backwards to the local preference. Uh, so now the next thing is eBGP paths are preferred over iBGP paths. So say this router wanted to go to a route in AS209. It will learn the, this route from its eBGP neighbor. It may also learn the route from its iBGP neighbor. So it would learn it this way. What you want to do is prefer the eBGP route because it's your next hop. We don't want to go to an iBGP peer to forward the traffic when we can just forward it out the eBGP route. 
And then the next one is the lowest IGP metric to the BGP next hop. So say that this router wanted to go to AS209, it would get a route from this router and from this router. And this router with IGP value is closer than this router. So it would use this router as the next hop. So now I have this red line. And what the red line is for is at this point, if you still have a tie between multiple routes, you have to decide whether or not you're going to support multipath, right? If you're going to support having more than one route to the to uh, the same network, like in leaf spine architectures, we support ECMP where we have multiple paths to the same router. It, you may want to do that, uh, and if you do, that means if anything that is tied at this point after step eight can be installed into the BGP routing table. If you want only a single route, then you can continue on. So the next thing that we look at is the oldest external path received. So which route have we known about the longest? And we'll use that route to minimize flapping. So if there's one route that's coming and going and coming and going, you don't want to use that route. If you have a stable route that's been in installed in your BGP table for a longer period of time, you would use that route. If you don't have an oldest external path, the next thing we look at is the lowest router ID. So the router ID is usually a loopback address. If it's not a loopback address, it's the, the IP interface with the highest IP address. That would be the, the router ID. So you could look at the lowest router ID. And if there's no lowest router ID, if your multiple paths are going to the same router, we move on to the next step. If this is a route reflector that's making the decision, it's going to prefer directly connected clients over information received from a peer. And that's almost like the preferring eBGP over IBGP. You're, you're preferring information that you're learning from your client rather than what your peer is learning from their client. And if that also cannot break the tie, the last thing is the lowest neighbor IP address. And there's always going to be a lowest IP neighbor address, right? Your next hop is on your IP interface is going to be, one of them is going to be higher than the other. So at that point, your tie is definitely broken. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for listening and take care.